And here we go. Here's Johnny. <laughs> no, here's Mary and me, yeah, Flash. Here's Flasher. <laughs> and, and Miss Mary here on the Dort table on this uh, wonderful 19th of October, 2019. Ah. Favorite time of the year. Favorite time of the year. Actually, this month usually. Dun, dun, dun. Well, it's right before, it's it's right in the middle of too hot and, and oh, it's fucking cold. You know, right in that little spot, you got like a month of, eh, it's a little, it's not so bad. And then right you about. Know, yesterday, what? yesterday was perfect. I mean, it was like 82 degrees out here. See what I mean? And then my mom called while I was out picking up pine cones. So I'm mm. talking to mom while I'm picking up pine cones. And we got these little natty bugs out here. Oh. Little bitty black buggers. They're not fleas. I call them no see Little dumb bitches. I apparently was a smorgasbord to them. Damn it. Damn it. Uh, oh, well. Yeah, well, we're at the, let us say. Yeah, we're at the dork table, and you just found out what the bugs are like yeah, <laughs> out yeah. here in the middle of the booty. Let us say hello to the, uh, well, for one, Grimner. And the bats and the bodies that participate in this insanity, almost on a regular basis, we get we got a few folk out there that that we seem to entertain with our inter, intertwining with our, perspectives, with <laughs> our banter. Well, so we don't always agree on an issue, or we will agree about some of it, but not all of it. Like the Greta thing, we we'll do some Greta bashing in a few minutes here. Uh, but well, first, we wind up coming to the same conclusion, hmm. but yeah. we get to it in different from different directions. Uh, yeah, sometimes, and sometimes the deal, the details of it, we disagree on. But the end is still the same. But the middle, uh, anyway. We got Barman, well, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Anti Asmo, Chels, Sedoni, Gramsci, Java Doctor <laughs> Two, Meister Brow, Poopster. Kate, Rob, Works, Trust, Number One, Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dark, Phantom, Vanna White, six, Vinny, Six, Chaskira, Cycle, Hello, my Cycle, Cyborg, Noodle, Duh, E Man, N, Sip, Me, From B, Gromit, Chase, Nines, Chase, Kiss, Ponder, Gander, Pwnstas, Real, Donny Woo, Sock Puppet, Salt Lake City, Mike, Smarties, The Holiest, Roger, and z -Picks. And that's the lineup of bots and bodies to entertain you on this uh, Saturday afternoon slash morning slash evening thing. Holy mokes, Batman. You mm. did that really fast. You're welcome. And today... I'm not near as fast. Good. And today... <laughs> Our our episode, our dark table episode, Miss Mary. Catch up, catch up. It's going to be... Uh, catch up? Is that uh, got tomato in it? Maybe. <laughs> it's going to be entitled, Let's, or Let Us Update a Verbal Definition. And I just thought, because you really play with words and go beyond what most of us do, that you would enjoy this. This is my Why gift certainly. to you. Okay. Well, that's my gift to you today. And why? Thank you. I feel like I've been totally specialized. I saw a link the other day. You know, if you've seen it on the interwebs, anyway, and it was uh, basically thanking Greta for nuclear instead of hemp, because now that the uh, system has all this, you know, friction against petroleum, the other side of it is going to get. Hey, we got to push. So now they're they're back on nuclear. They're supposedly uh, reinstating plans to not only build exist, you know, build planned the ones they had planned for now, but in the future, like 300, 300 new facilities. And I was like, oh, so you know, instead of to, yeah, instead, instead of, of having a hack and cough and wheeze and deal with smog, we're all going to glow in the dark. How wonderful. Yeah, but you'll be able to water the plants without leaving the room. I mean, think about it. You know, you could use your mind. 
from your newly developed, you know, radiated skill. Oh, hey, so it's like an X-Man kind of thing. Oh, uh, it's a forced. Don't forced tell me morphing. you never saw the Incredible Hulk. That's what happens when you, you know, damage yourself. I saw the Incredible Hulk, and when he gets angry, he turns green with envy. He always turns. Because he can no longer fit into his. How come his pants never fall off? Everything else shreds and falls off, but his pants never do. Because Why you can't that? show your pecker on national TV when children <laughs> are watching. I don't want to see a green one you have anyway. To, so. You have to save that show and your pecker shit to the children for the Internet. You can't do it on the public stuff. You can only do it on the Internet. Uh, so it kind of surprises me that there ain't some freaking weirdo out there that made one for the Internet. You know, using the shit you can't put up on the TV. Mm. Well, you know, because censorship, you know, it's for the children. Anyway. It's the censorship. <laughs> it's not the love boat. It's the censorship. <laughs> Ship back to the Admiralty boat. Anyway. Hey, I saw something the other day. Someone had shared a uh, something on Twitter about um, we are now free. No gold fringe on the flag. And I went, what? So I started snooping. And sorry. Sorry, sweetheart. Nice try, but no cookie. What? That, because for one, they didn't. Was, there was one flag that yeah. didn't have the, you know, gold star BS fringy stuff. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, isn't. Yeah. Okay. Here's the, the real question I got. though. Isn't. The U.S. flag, a battle flag like any other country's battle flag, <laughs> when you think about it, because uh, well, I've been I thought that's what any flag was. Okay, right. Now, that's what I think, too. But somehow, they've been... <sighs> okay, like the title. Let's update a verbal definition, okay? Uh -huh. So, in a time in history, when you lived wherever you lived in some big city, you saw another country's flag you'd recognize that symbolism meant something today what does it mean they're trying to mix us all together so we're like soup they don't want us to have an identity whoever we are yeah, yeah. okay well they, in your colors does not mean the same as what it used to mean right and they basically and they change the uh the verbal definition of a word can be completely changed over 20 40 years where when you're when it uh in the future people will use that word in a different fashion than they do today if it's manipulated properly like yeah give you an example i know you're going to love to talk about this i read that uh, income was defined as a, a return on your investment that was Income. Okay, well, when they made the income tax law, then they rewrote the definition of income to include your physical labor. And how the hell they got away with it and how the hell people said okay to this, I was brought into it, you know, as a normal. I mean, I didn't know there was a rebellion against society. That came a long time later. You know what I mean? Uh huh. So yeah, do burn. Right. So the bulk of us, we're we're raised in all this crap and taught that it's that's what people do and it's all normal. And then I, it, I remember when you started to look deeper into words than the average yep. Joe, and I paid attention to you. So that's why I brought this topic up. I thought you might like to give us a little story. And uh, I picked on Greta because I don't know she's in the news, and I I. Doing my best with trying to stay up on shit. Okay, I gotta yeah. interrupt real quick. Hey, Dork Cakes, and thanks for firing up the bubbler, Rob Works. Hey, Mental, I didn't see you come in. Huh? Hey, Mental's just, here. It's good. You just snuck in. Okay. Freddy, come here. I, I love He's a mental I, case. I, 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 I love the stones. <laughs> Fred, <laughs> Fred and Barney. <laughs> what? All righty then. Peter Laurie mm. loves the Rolling Stones. Fred and Barney. 
anyway. Yeah, well, Peter Laurie. Well, I wasn't meaning that you were interrupting. What I meant was, I'm trying to keep up, you know, for once, do one show with. It's not about past stuff. Let's do something about right now. And the thing that's got everybody's attention is that they've propped up this autistic kid that can read stuff. Whatever. However you do this. I'm not watching her. I don't give a fuck what she's got to say about anything. She's a 16-year-old girl. What my question to you today on the Doric table, little missy, if you want to answer it, you, name me one time in history when the uh, words of a 16-year-old child of either gender got us anywhere. Uh, actually, there is a young man, and I shared a meme about it, um, who was... Uh, just a minute. <laughs> let, me, let me find it. Um, dun, dun, dun. I want to hear the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 oh, we have to think it. No, oh, or you can hum it. Do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, um, pretty close. Here he is. Okay. Brian Slatt, who is a 23-year-old inventor who designed the world's first ocean plastic cleanup system mm. at age 16. Yeah, I remember when he did it. Yeah. yeah. What about he's it? He's now developing, or he's now leads a group developing advanced technologies to rid the world's oceans of plastic. And his solution involves no economic destruction, admirable passion, uh, right thesis. Media is not interested. No. But, Yeah. Okay. You know, there but, are just because someone is a certain age. No, nah, that's age not what nothing. I said. No, no, no. Don't start. No, you this said a sixteen-year-old. Yeah, you, I said. Let me age. repeat it for you. You took it wrong. Uh, let me stop you because I said, name the last time, okay, the words of a sixteen-year-old child of either sex ended well. And that's not the same thing as what the kid did because he was. Uh, he was inventing something. This girl isn't inventing anything. She's being propped by other people to perform like a lap dog. Because oh yeah, she's yeah uh, she's a trained seal. The, look, you, she couldn't survive in the world living in solitude. She couldn't take care of her her daily needs. Not complete. She and besides that, living in solitude drives us all loony to a point. But that particular mind would need a lot of attention. So what I'm saying to you, Miss Mary, on the dork table about is the words of a child, not the deeds of a fucking child. This kid doesn't do anything. It's fly around the fucking world telling people not to burn oil. So it's stupid. It's the whole fucking thing is ignorant. Why? I'm just using it to, for dork table shit because uh, it's happening. Yeah. Um, but I'm not comparing her to somebody that accomplished anything. I'm making the point that compared to somebody that accomplished something, this is stupid. Oh yeah, that's what I'm but trying it gets to get across. People in the field. Done. It gets people in the field. Doesn't do nothing. And, to and they're using her, yeah. and she was picked appropriately because she is an autistic child. She has OCD. You know, she has several <laughs> yeah, other yeah, yeah. behavioral disorders. Yeah. Or they call them disorders. <laughs> now, I know, I know people that are autistic that are freaking brilliant and wonderful to be around, but that you got to kind of get the the lay of the land, if you will. Um, you know, because because some of them they are very very intelligent. They just it's their social skills, their people skills, and the way they process things is not the same as. "Quote unquote normal people," although normal is just a drier setting. Yeah, my first thought was that really is that any different than me and you doing it? You know, exchanging because we don't get along about a lot of crap. But yeah, it but see, doesn't she get is emotional. Being used. That's what I'm saying. And that is the key here. She's being used, and as far as I'm concerned, this is this is child abuse on the global stage. You know, they say all the world's a stage. Well, guess what? She's the lead actress in the child abuse play. 
that's what I mean. They're and and she's a distraction from all of the other child abuse shit that they're coming out with now of all of the pedophile rings, all the human trafficking rings, mm. all of the other, you know, the Epstein crap. She's a distraction. They're staying in the same kind of sort of stream of thought because they have to in order to steer you away from that stream of thought. But it's still, it's child abuse. I think so. <laughs> I agree. Excuse me. Bless you. I finally agree with you on something without... <laughs> thinking it through first, but no, we, that's what I thought, because <laughs> uh, <coughs> as a parent, okay, I got kids, and mm -hmm. to put them in a position of attention to make money and pimp them out like, you know, tramps, <laughs> see, because I've yeah. got a different kind of thinking of how I see the world than other people, other people think, oh, she's getting world famous, and and I think that that's bad. <laughs> you don't want that. The less people know about you, the better life is. I'm telling you. All the famous people are all fucked up. And they, or they die of something weird like a you know, self-inflicted gunshot to the back of the head. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah so, I've, read, like I, I've read this with my own fucking four eyes, Mary. So I'm not... You know, have you seen this, too, on the interwebs? What's that? Where uh, people were suicide, com com committed suicide, but they shot themselves in the back of the head. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's amazing. You know, it's like magic. Okay. How do they do that? How do we accept? Okay, there, see, there's the difference between how you think, I think, and me. Because of, uh, hmm, what would it be? I think lifestyles. Because you're a stable, you, you know, staple, you live there, everybody knows you kind of, well, your whole life, things are different than me being so transient. So, hmm, I think we just look at things the same, but we get there differently. Like we were saying before the show, or, or during the show, you might have, I, I just know you said it. <laughs> Can't remember when. So you're trans, huh? What? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, that. Yeah, because I'm transplanted, uh, transmigrated, trans fuck them the fuck off, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, I guess so. But I'm sure the, uh, the Internet has a different definition of what that word represents now. Oh, yeah, the Internet always has a different definition of what things really are. Well, okay, there's my point. Why isn't there just one one thing? See, the, this, this illusion of freedom of choice makes us a way easier to control. Because, you know, well, they got the freedom to say that. Well, everything they just said is bullshit. Well, what are you going to do about it? See, when, but, you know, like what Vinny will overlook about somebody being an obnoxious, rude cunt, is that the person doing it has no idea that they're doing it? Yeah, I don't think um, I don't think that represents freedom of speech in in the long run. Well, it's not true freedom of speech because are they free to actually speak their thoughts, or are they free to speak the thoughts that they have been fed? <laughs> free. <laughs> How do you? Well. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, it's like, um, what was it? Uh, da, 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 da. I'd, I'd watched a thing, um, Russian, you know, the, some of the propaganda from uh, the Bolsheviks and that kind of shit. Mm. And you are now free. Look at all the freedoms you have now. Uh, all uh, you have to do is give us all of the grain that you've grown and give us your fatted calf. and mm. all. But you are free of having to go to war now. You, you have to pay for all the other people that we're sending off to war that really didn't want to go in the first place, but you're free. Mm. Yeah, they have totally redefined the word free. Mm. Yeah, America, land of the free, except for you have to pay for a license to go fish. You have to pay for a license to go hunting. You have to pay to get a license to drive. You have to pay to own a house, you know, continuing extortion aka property tax because of my roads but we're free it we're is. free 
Yeah. Wow. That's really freaking free. Well, that's the best we can do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think so. I do. I don't think so. I, well, of course it is. Are we not doing the best we can as a collective? I mean, if there was better, then we'd be doing that. But no, okay. we're collectively, that's what I'm saying is the instructions are fucking wrong. The fuel sources are disturbed and we're we're given things that, that the system knows harm us, like fluoride in the water. Yeah. You know, d- calling it something uh, that it's not on purpose and misguiding the public the way they do is just fucked up. And they do it here, too. Fluoride in the freaking toothpaste. Oh, what yeah. the f- Okay, well, there you go. I'm supposed to abandon the last fucking group of asshats that own my paperwork. And then, oh, I'm going to trade it in for this group of asshats to, so that they can own my paperwork. When, why? And what you, the, no, you notice it says that it's harmful if swallowed, and if you swallow mm-hmm. it, you're supposed to contact Poison Control or Poison Helpline. Duh. And yet, and yet yeah. they make no mention of the fact yeah. that you absorb it through your gingiva or your tissue mm-hmm. in, in your, your gums. Mouth. Yeah. You know, when you take it, when you take a uh, nitroglycerin pill, you know, if you're having a heart attack, you put it underneath your tongue because it gets absorbed directly into the bloodstream. Oh, but heaven forbid you swallow it because then those enzymes and acids in your digestive system just might corrupt the poison that they're getting right into your bloodstream. Uh. Yeah, I know. I'm be- being snarky again. No, you. I don't care. Be as snarky if you want. Uh, just don't be snarky at me, or I have to defend myself. <laughs> I will break out my snark gun. Well, snark, snark. okay, so, you know, what we do agree about, about this Greta crap, is that yes. this is not a child that should be doing this, because she's being pimped out by her parents, and they're using yeah. and they're using the illness she has as a reason to allow it to happen. Instead of protecting her from us, which she should do. It's a child, little girl, 15, 16 years old. What the fuck do they know? I mean, let's be honest here. You know, would you, do you think if that you had control of the world at 15 that you would have done anything good with it? Now? <laughs> now that you're not 15 anymore? Now that I'm no longer 15 and, yeah. and I know how full of crap I was. At 15, there you go. That you didn't know because you had to go grow up to find out the shit you were taught so that you could quit being a dumbass. Because yeah. that's the same Okay, the same process I went through. I just went through it at a, a rapid uh, rapid time, you know, I guess to define it. Because I don't believe in time so much as I'm supposed to. Well, yeah. But you're capable. Man, see, society has has got us with all these uh, laws and verbal definitions of crap that they got no business in in the first place. But as a collective, I think you might agree with this. We've been conditioned to believe we, we ain't worth the fucking shit we're made out of. And without them, we're dead. Well, and we've also been conditioned to believe with the whole Big Bang Theory that we are not exceptional. We are not special. Some of us are – now, special is different from equal. i got to put that out there first. Some of us are more special than others. <laughs> but we're all, we're all, you know, we're all basically equal. It's just that, you know, we, we kind of sort of – we're given – whatever when we are born it's not necessary you know they all say well we're supposed to be equal as in equality of results well the the results are directly proportional to the effort you put into it so if you ain't going to put diddly squat for effort into something your results are not going to be quite as equal as someone who busted their ass to get where they're at so you know, all of this equality and specialness and stuff. But getting back to the whole, you know, the whole Big Bang thing, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, we were just this happenstance thing. You know, there in the beginning there was nothing and then nothing exploded into something. 
and now we're here. But it was all chance. It was all freakish things. It just all quinkadinkly fell into place. Yeah, right. Well, you know, if it comforts you to dream that way, you just keep on dreaming, darling. Hmm. I'm going to be in another dream that's just a little bit more fun, that that is a little bit more there is intention behind what's going on here and then the people come in and go oh well then it must be god's intention that we suffer like this and blah 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 and so no we are given free will so that you know if you want to it's you are free to be a total douchebag and if you're going to be a total douchebag then you are free to deal with the consequences of your douchebaggery mm. you know so well, okay, uh, well, and but life isn't always fair, and some people, some people no. get accused of douchebaggery that really didn't do anything, like, for example, being married to a douchebaggery and going down with the ship when he gets caught happens to a lot of females. Well, it happens to couples. Like, say that uh, I was a jewel thief or some crap, and you know I get caught. Well, my wife is disgraced right along with me. So, yes, because yeah. you are you are judged by the company that you keep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that people, you know, they like you, and then but if what if the circumstances made it look like you did something, but you never did it? What about that? And that happens. And that's what the dork table was for in the first place, is we all oh, yeah. the people that keep coming back to this crazy shit we do. They know what it's like to be accused of something they didn't do, but circumstances sure look that way. Oh, yeah. And it was normally around cheating on a test, something like that. Oh, you can't know that. How the hell did you learn that? You've never seen that before. You must be cheating. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. but aren't there – okay, uh, let me change the subject and ask you a new question. Ready? Ready. All right. And take as long as you want to rant on this one, but it's it's a real quick question. Which was first, time or life? Life. Okay. Now, knowing that, the way you know it, tell me why time is bullshit. And then if time is bullshit, then doesn't that mean that it's always been this way? There are time parts the bullshit. There is no beginning or end to it. It's just a thing, you know. Like find the find the beginning of a circle. <laughs> uh, hey, what's this? Um. Well. Uh, okay. Time. Time kind of sort of gets a bad rap as far as I'm concerned. Um, Funny. You know, there's, Sirks there's, talking to me here. Ah. Okay. Well, I'm live. Well, you know, everybody says that, you know, you're running out of time or whatever. Yeah. And it's not necessarily that we're running out of time. It's just that we're allowing time to control us, per se. Mm -hmm. You know, you are you become a slave to time. And mm, how do I want to put this? Um, you know, it's not necessarily so much that... that um, Time did not exist, because if you didn't have time, how would you measure yesterday, today, all that other fun stuff? I mean, well, that's, that's how you know that things are different now than they used to was be at one time. Okay, but, but it, Mary, wait, wait, wait. It's the whole concept of time. But it's, it's different for – see, I can't imagine that everybody looks at it the same way, because I don't look at it the way you're defining it yourself. I don't see it that way. So – it, it, it seems to me it's an individual's per, personal perspective on it's got yes. – yeah, well, to me, it's, it's an illusion. I'll go on – I'll, I'll talk about that later, but I just wanted to, to let you know where I'm at with you on this because I don't yeah. see it that way. But go on. Go on, go on. I'm well, sorry. And it can be illusory, but it's it's also – you know, time is just one of those things that it's like, uh, it's really hard to describe. God dang fly. I have. I, have, <laughs> uh, um, I, I don't know. I see time as, as a measuring device, mm -hmm. but so many people have allowed it to become a controlling thing for them. 
you know? Yeah. Um, as opposed to, um, you know, just kind of going with it. Because really, you know, all we have is right now. You can look back at the past, and that's why we have to have some kind of time in order to be able to reference what has happened to us before. Mm. But really all you've got is right now. You can look forward to the future, but that ain't promised to anybody. Right. The past right, you right. cannot change. Right. You know, it's already happened. You can always lie about it though. See. You can lie about it. You yeah. can yeah, you can you can tell all kinds of wonderful little stories that may not be true. But it's stuff that's already happened. It, you know, that's oh, yeah. how, you, right. how you can right. reference what has already happened yeah. and also reference what has not yet happened but is either hopeful or you are dreading that it happens. Mm. But it's, the problem is so many people have become a slave to this whole concept of time. Yeah. Well, all right. You know, let, me ask, let me ask you this then. Enjoying it. Right. But, you know, you've made in your lifetime, we'll just use this term to not be too specific, thousands of meals in your lifetime where you've yes. prepared. All right. Then how many of those meals that you made do you remember making? This this Absolutely is how quite I. Quite a few. Okay. Right. But this is how I mean illusion. You know, I see this all as an illusion because just memories of events. And most of it was just existing. Nothing special fucking happening. And then some things were like, wow, I don't believe that happened. But for the most of 60 years, it's just been a lot of calm and then a wave. You know, and then calm again and then a wave. Yeah. But uh, to to make it like real, how do you... Hmm. I don't know. I maybe it's it's more real to you than it is to me, and I can't I can't grasp uh, an idea of your reality because I'm living in my own. <laughs> yeah. Right. So the yeah. best we can really fucking do is just try to explain to the other guy what you see, and then he'll go, yeah, but I see it like this, like I do to you, or like you do to me. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, what I guess the the goal of all this and what I do with Vinny a lot of times is try to show people that even though you disagree with the other guy, the friendship shouldn't have anything to do with that. Me, me and me and my friends are not friends because we're on the same side of a fucking idea. We're friends first, and then some of the ideas we agree with, and some of them we go, eh, "You're an idiot. You'll come around." <laughs> Yeah. And it's yeah. true. I mean, it sounds rude, but to be really blunt and honest, which we try to do, you know, hold that to a standard here at the dork table. You can't call a nigger a nigger at the dork table, then then something wrong with you. And again, well, yeah, and that comes. I don't like using that word. Yeah, bad, bad, bad. That I mean, comes from all that. Yeah, that's because you don't know what the definition of the fucking word is. It got tagged on. No, the word. I do know what the definition yeah. of the word. Okay, is, I there you it go. Up. So it got see, but it got tagged to a race, and people went along with it instead of going, oh no, 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 like they do with the yeah. Jews. Good God, you bash my people, and I'm telling you, ninety out of a hundred are going to side with my side, and I don't even want that side. I like to see them end it. <laughs> it's horrible. We're 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 fucked as a collective because we're fed all this fantasy and nonsense, and it's fueled by TV and internet and shit that you never see in reality. You'll never see any of this shit. But it turn the TV set on. Thirty murders in a you know, you know neighborhood. <laughs> Life goes on in that neighborhood. Nothing changes. Yeah. Or like, you it's know, like a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Well, like that Sherlock Holmes uh, with the Chinese girl. Me and Cirque watched that. Uh, what was that called, sir? Oh, she's listening to headphones. Uh, that Sherlock and the Chinese girl show. I don't. I don't. I don't. I anyway, no it was. A, yeah, but it was a TV show. Anyway, the point of it is, they guide your um, your the way you see social shit like inoculation. They drop little subtle things in about you know, oh the people that are crazy enough to believe that Kennedy was killed by the CIA. <laughs> Misdirection yeah. through television right in front of you. But it's so subtle oh, yeah. it 
how many people sit and actually pay attention to what they're watching? You know, that's a lot of what hmm? I get from TV anymore, and what? it's not necessarily that I'm I'm getting so much entertainment out of it, but it's like, dude, seriously, did you just see them slip that shit in there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Because you're aware of the wording or something about the way that you uh, learned how to interpret the language changed. You started to, to pay more attention to the details instead of the rules and the regulations. Find out what the meaning of something is. That's how they focus with the Admiralty Court. You're, you're so busy being conned by these fucking thieves that you don't know, know how to argue with them. They're, they're not even fighting crime. They're, they're uh, enforcing statutes and codes. Yes. That's not, that's not law. That's statutes and codes. That's something separate. That's why they're called statutes and codes and not law, people. <laughs> but, how, much, okay, yeah. right. I'm trying to make that as simple as possible. I think you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, I yeah? do. Okay. Be, but you have that upper hand of being exposed to the inner workings of uh, how the social government works by being in it. Oh yeah, when I when I was on uh, city council, I got to learn a lot of how how that verbiage, you know, the differences in it. So, well, that's yeah. why I picked this kind of idea because I figured we would do two hours in this because we'll just throw the shit back and forth. <laughs> but still going to go with time, still an illusionary thing because the physical crap is all gone. It's all changed. I've changed. My body has yeah. changed. It reproduces itself over periods of time. But so, how how do you actually acknowledge and understand that there has been a change if you don't have some concept of time passing? The way because you're gonna laugh if I tell you what I what I think in my mind, but you'll probably laugh at me because it might sound a little out there. But I'll start at the beginning. Okay. It all started with uh, a science link I was following. And in that link, they're writing about how each individual cell in your body has its own individual intelligence. Not yeah. like it can learn to write a book or anything, but it can actually communicate with the cells around it. So I started yeah. to, okay, I started to let that sink in. And over a period of time, I started to think about, no, I'm you know, not feeling so hot today. So I started to think about communicating with my cells and get them in line. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. Because whatever you believe in life is real. So I believe that by telling my cells to repair the shit that's fucked up, that I start feeling better. So that's what I do. <laughs> You know, instead of aspirins yeah. and, uh, you know, heroin or whatever else, you know, crap that people might think of doing when they're uh, not feeling well, I just think shit and smoke a little bit. <laughs> okay. And Chaskura, no, um, the speed of time is not a definite. They have, I've read up on some of that stuff, and the speed of time is not a constant. They have found that. I'm not going to say they've proven that because science, science is never settled. But they have found that the speed of, of light is not constant. There are factors that affect it. And I have to, I have to respond to something else he said about um, – uh, let me scroll up and find that now. Something about uh, if you're not a slave to time or – I don't remember what. Well, take your time. There's no rush, Mary. We got plenty. I know. We are only into uh, the first. I know, because all we have is now. You exactly. know, so I can oh, go back go. and peek. Whoa. But, Didn't that give you a kind of a different outlook on the reality of time travel? I mean, it's the greatest freaking story manners ever thought of. I mean, to entertain, you know, actually, right? When you when you reminisce, you're time traveling. Did you know? No, that? no, no. That's you're taking it out Seriously, of. Seriously, though, you are. You are time traveling no, when you reminisce. You're not physically going anywhere. You're just doing it in your head. You don't need. That's what I mean. It's physical. 
to go back into another year and all that shit with your physical body is not, doesn't make any fucking sense. You couldn't be there because you didn't exist when it happened in the first place. So no, but the concept is so entertaining to me, not to you, not to, I'm talking about the way I see this shit, right? And I'm just never going to get uh, bored of the entertainment value of time travel, but war, I, I get bored of that. Cops and robbers, eh, I get bored of that. Time travel, and it, other people don't, it, Cirque doesn't really seem too interested in the idea, but it's to me it's just uh, so amusing that it never gets old. See, and I don't know that I would necessarily, okay, wait a minute here. <laughs> here it is. Okay, Chuskar just, re thank you, Chuskar. Uh, says, if you're not a slave to time, age backward and be younger tomorrow. And it's, it's not necessarily, that's not, you're, that's one you're, fun way of looking at things. Yeah, if you look at it at a not, physical, not, Mary, at a physical, yes. your meat suit physical level. Okay. Be, me and Cirque, I don't know how the fuck to explain that, but we're, we're so similar, and yet we're so, you know, age-wise we're not similar. So the number thing is really... That lesson alone, you know, how could I manage to live with somebody that was so, you know, distant and far away and manage to grow up the same way the fuck I did and understand things the way I do? What are the odds of that? Didn't run into it back where I'm from. See, and that's that's where you just realize that age is, is just laps around the sun. Well... It you gives know, what me, we call age is laps around the sun. Right, because my mind doesn't feel any different than it did 30 years ago. I still feel the same then as I did then. But my body, the meat suit's a little bit more worn than it was at that point. But uh, as far as time goes, hmm. see, it, it's and a... Actually, thing. your meat suit hmm. is at the maximum. Well, some cells are like seven years old. But uh, what is that? You... You destroy a million cells a day and you create a million cells a day. Your body is constantly recycling itself. Oh, okay. And a hundred years ago, hemp was not a, a, a legal issue to be dealt with. And people used it. True. They ate it. They smoked it. They wore it. They did everything they could think of doing with hemp and cannabis back in the day, right? But in the modern yeah, day... my dad collected ditch weed. And in the modern day, I was raised at... Uh, taught at school about what a hard life they had and how life expectancy was so fragile and this, that, and the other. And then I read and look and start paying attention to detail and I think about it for a minute. And oh, we got fucking scammed our whole life through this public education. Bunch of crap. It's because public education, the, the main driving force behind public education it's not teaching you how to think. It's teaching you what to think. All right. So and There are so many sciences out there hmm. that, you know, this is the science and this is how it works and you need to understand this and how dare you question it. This is all settled because this science is settled. And yet the very definition of science is not settled. <laughs> never settled. But is it a waste? We will of time this education crap all right all is it those... a waste or is it just another learning experience that you need to have and get past maybe you have to keep repeating those lessons until you finally freaking figure out that duh wars just really don't do a whole hell of a lot of good and they tear up a lot of shit and a lot of people die i think maybe we ought to evolve past that mm. yeah think well you know on top of all that I just had ideas. You know, me and you are, okay. we're the, what's left of uh, the 60s, that period of time where um, hmm, people were, they were dependent on each other because of necessity. Yes. Yeah. And the 70s pushed all that, get away from this and get away from that and be a weirdo. And, you know, a lot of that, I think, had little kernels of truth, but they it got, somehow or another, got tweaked, got subverted, got 
No, no, no. I mean, I'm talking the CIA was doing experiments on the public with freaking uh, acid. No, no. This is deep. These things are huge, and people are kept enough in the dark or ign taught to ignore things in a, in a fashion, you know, where it bounces off them. It doesn't even interest them enough to, to hold on to the concept. Your water has fluoride in it. Don't fucking drink it. What? What are you talking about? See? And there you get that. From average yeah. people. Well, think about how uneducated we truly are about the shit that matters. All the shit that matters to me today, I think the reality and the truths of it, I've learned in probably the last 30 years of living, not the first. The first 30 were just to have fun, fuck around and do this, and do that, and go here, go there. And the last 30 were, you know, polishing off all the rough spots. So, you know. Well, there you go. So, my goal, I probably won't do a good job of it by, by any stretch of the imagination, reading the way I chat. But is to go out with a smile on my face. Yeah. But, oh, I, yeah. I, okay. I personally think that we should enjoy this life while we've got it because, you know, so many of And yet, I, you know, I was going to say we so many people squander, but you don't really squander. Because you have the time you have is the time you have. Creative you know, accounting. Is how uh, you use it. Right. But it's creative accounting. It's a way to keep track of us. It's a way to control everything around everything around the human that's connected to a clock is man made. It's all bullshit. We're lied to, Mary. And I, there these these things I keep repeating, I cannot define them in a way that would suit anyone else but me. So the best I'm ever going to be able to do is just remind people that I think we're all being screwed equally. It's not just you. You're not getting any better or worse than I am. Oh, no. Yeah, I understand right? that. Every, yeah. Everybody's getting it. Mm -hmm. and Every, yeah. Everybody gets the same dose. Okay, now, <laughs> what I read... how many people actually swallow it. Exactly, right. For example, look, can I use Rob Wirtz? My buddy Rob, it just moved to Arkansas. And he's a good example of that. He doesn't like people to give him any shit. So, and they don't. I don't think. He has a, what seems to me, a good life. What I've seen, I saw pictures of where he's moving to and thought, wow. Comfortable, you know, and uh, free. That's what I thought at the time when I saw the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yours too, not, uh, but from your yard shots that you posted, mm -hmm. you know, you got to... <laughs> Got a little bit of space there. And me and Cirque have a little bit of space in the back too. So the difference from like living in an apartment building to living in a, a house with a you know a little bit of room to walk around in is it's different. And some people Oh yeah. And some people like when I lived in California, the property was big enough for the house and the pool, but no yard. There was no nowhere to put a yard. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, see, and, and house, I like having pool. my ground where I can go out and just walk around barefoot. And I didn't realize that that was actually considered a, a healthful thing until just recently because, I mean, all of us kids grew up running around barefoot. Number one, during the summertime, the folks couldn't afford to keep us in shoes. Mm -hmm. So we learned to run around barefoot, mm. but, you know, it wasn't until just recently that the grounding and this and that. And it's mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm, okay, fine. You know. Well, I I like having dirt around that I can walk in. Well, see, so, and, how, and do you talk to your kid, your grandkids? Do they hold the same values as you? In some aspects, yes. Okay. And in some, no. Okay. Can but, you... That's I can that can be said about anybody. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I've got my indoctrination for crying out loud. I just express it in a completely different way than most folks do. You know, use the system to gain for yourself. If you're gonna, if it's gonna exist, use it. Take advantage of it because it's just a void. It has no value. It's bullshit. It's twenty one trillion, twenty two trillion in debt. It doesn't. You cannot do anything to this thing. That's that's not a realistic number. Well, it doesn't matter. That's, I. That's what they do. I mean, that's why they add more zeros to the end of it. 
and my uncle had told me this, and he's he's like this total math whiz, and um, he said that basically how it works is once you get so many zeros behind a number, it no longer becomes a real number for most people. And so when you once you get up to past like a million, people start kind of they almost get a Bambi in the headlights look in their brain because it's just a number that they can't fathom. And so the more zeros you add to it, then the the more mind numbed they get. And so it's just a totally unreal number. Twenty three trillion dollars. What the hell? Show me twenty three trillion, so that I can actually conceive of it. I understand. Now, I've that. tried to. I understand it completely. But I was yeah. kind of mocking the whole thing. That's why I don't give a fuck about finance because everywhere I've ever been, the government is using fiat currency to operate the fucking society that I'm in. Okay, I gotta, I gotta respond <laughs> to this. Um, no, Chaskura, fluoride does not kill germs in the water. Oh, my God. That's what they did fluorine in the water for. It, not fluoride. No, no. It, fluoride so is a toxic, toxic byproduct. Yeah. At least the fluoride that gets put in the water yeah. is a toxic byproduct. We don't get a natural. Between natural fluoride and the shit they put in the water. And, and Mary, there's a good ex- example of what I'm talking about. You're either being fucked with right here live on the radio by a guy having fun with you. Because Mm -hmm. this is an old issue that if you're living in 2019 and you don't know that fluoride is poison, you're typing on an internet site. You should get the fuck off the site for a bit and do a little reading. Because that's just crazy. Fluoride's got fucking, it's good for you. Help! Okay, I had my point. I'm sorry, but uh, if that's what you're reading there, grow up. I mean, there's points for opinion and there's points for fact. You know, and we we might fuck around here at the door table and make fun of this and that, but it, no, there's no way you can be that that behind it. You know, it's like uh, like you can't. Who can you not bash right now in America? Guess Israel. Israel. There you go. <laughs> and that just always every time I see something about that, I think. What are you doing that you feel as though you need to make laws to keep people from calling you out on your bullshit? What the hell are you doing? I don't know, but the the Iranian guy down the uh, owns the kiosk, David. Uh, today, <laughs> what did I say to him? Because uh, I tease him about my country's going to just you know keep coming until they get you know get their war with you. You know he knows and I know, but. We don't hold it against each other. Just that's just the government's. Yeah. Well, okay. I'm you, I'm looking up this. Sorry, uh, I, I had to look up. Okay. Well, uh, Center of Disease Control ah, disinfection with chlorine. Oh, I had to look that up. Did you? Well, you know yeah, what? Chlor- chlorination is a process of adding chlorine to drinking water to disinfect it and kill germs. Yeah. Different processes can be used to achieve safe levels of chlorine in drinking water. Okay. Do, so. When they dump that in the water, are they wearing the hazmat suit like they wear when they use the fluoride? When they dump the fluoride in 50-pound bags, they got to wear a hazmat suit to protect them from the fucking fluoride. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that shit gets on your skin and you absorb it. Can you imagine at that rate? Food. But it's ex- it's extremely concentrated. So you know they show, and that's that's one thing that it's very disingenuous when they show all of these pictures of people that are mixing all this stuff. Not saying <laughs> that the chemicals are not hazardous, but when they show people mixing these chemicals with water, it's because the chemical is so potent, so dangerous, so life threatening mm-hmm. in its concentrated Pure, yeah. form Pure that you have to protect the body. Now, once you once you dilute it down um, with Well, water, that's okay, but that's the other side that they want to push is to, to soften the blow. Of, uh, see, you got to understand that. Well, you know what? However you want to understand it, Mary, at this point, this shit is bad for you. How they put it in, why they put it in, it's not good for you. If you think it's good for you, you're wrong. There you go. It's those things are basically put in there so that um, 
They'll kill your third eye over your lifetime, so that by the time you're 60, you're a vegetable talking to your TV set about what time it is. That's what the fucking system wants. That's what they're oh, getting. Oh, yeah. They want you yeah. smart enough to be able to operate the machines, but dumb enough to not realize that you're just a little <laughs> drunk. No. But the lack of 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 interest in the drones to to gather to do anything that's worthwhile. It's always stupid or violent. Groups never get that do anything good, never get any press. The only people that get press are idiots that are out there fucking fighting each other in the street like dogs. Stupid. The ignorant ones, you know? Yeah. That's, well, when you think about it, what is violence? Violence is when I have absolutely nothing left of value to speak. I'm going to punch you until I feel better because I'm a human. That's what we are taught to do. <laughs> and then the yeah. sad part about it, if you do this shit to other people, at the end of what you're doing, you don't feel any better about yourself than you did when you started. It's not, no, it's not possible. No, people don't realize that. Well, right. It's not possible. But what is possible is to not have any feelings about what damage you do to other people. <laughs> physically words yeah. are usually uh, just a, you know people assume well if you said that you were trying to ah you meant that and all that kind of shit right but eh, they could be wrong but when you punch somebody in the nose with your fist <laughs> that kind of closes the gap between could it be real or is it all in my mind at the moment of impact it's real and that's the only fucking language that we all collectively seem to understand. It's sad. Yeah. And it's because we're raised to not trust each other. <laughs> we're raised to despise the next guy as an enemy because his parents are from that country. <laughs> well, it's this whole other, you know, be afraid of other, be afraid of different don't trust other. Don't trust different. Be a nice little gray drone. Oh, if we didn't have different or if we didn't have other, we would all be walking around in freaking drab clothing going, oh. Well, we do Nobody that talk about the freaking weather because it might be other or different. Oh, uh, I don't know. Give me an example of what exactly you mean. Because we have a lot of freedom here in, in Denmark that I just guess I've taken for granted. Like their censorship, they don't have any really any kind of censorship. Their people are ju are just held responsible that if they don't want their kids watching shit, don't let your kids watch it. Not we are not going to air it because the children might see it. It's be responsible for your fucking self. And that's the kind of uh, environment that I came in. In the first place, so that you know, that's the one I end up with. I got what I was looking for by a, a fluke. <laughs> okay, what was that? I just saw something. Just Did in you? the chat. Oh, uh, you are? Are you? You want to do a show with him, and, and I'll just get out. No, I'm no? I'm listening sure? to you, but it just it just clicked, and so I had to. Okay, seriously, third eye. The fuck? Okay, your third eye is your pineal gland, and yes, aluminum and fluoride. Do calcify the yeah. pineal gland. Duh. They have proved that. And the pineal gland, um, if you didn't need your pineal gland, you wouldn't have it. Let's put it like that. And the pineal gland does produce certain um, hormones and chemicals and, you know, fun little things in your in your mind to help with your perception. So, yes. If if you're taking something into your system that calcifies, solidifies a part of your brain, odds are it's not real good for you. Lithium is a numbing and a neurotoxin as well. So, putting that out there. Oh, I was taking a hit while you were ranting. Oh, okay. You're welcome. I'm seeing all of this shit and it's like, Isn't okay. Isn't it? Uh, see? That's what I mean. It, it's not about time. It's about emotion. It's about how you feel about shit, right? 
Well, yeah, well, okay, well. Everything, basically, feelings, even these people that go, oh, don't let your feelings get in the way. Excuse me? You are feeling <laughs> extremely <laughs> logical. You are feeling <laughs> logical. That is a feeling. Well, but isn't all this crap in your head in the first place, all this feeling shit that we're, we're negotiating right now, it's not physically real. I can pick up the mouse off the desk. Now, I can pick up the pen off the desk, right? But... To pick up my feeling off the desk, I'd have to stab myself in the hand with a pen. And that is stupid. So I'm not going to follow that road. You know, there's like this common sense that we all share. But with some people, it ends at a really critical spot. And they get willing to be violent towards their fellows for a paycheck. And they call it things like enforcement and military. But what what the system is designed to do is create a population of people that require the babysitting of enforcement because they're a danger to oh, yeah. their self. If they're not looked after, well, they'll fuck their self all up. We have to protect them. And okay, yeah, and okay, I gotta I gotta interrupt again. Yes, penguins still technically have wings, and have you ever watched oh. them swim underwater? They use their wings for wow. swim. They fly through the water. I'm going to quit the dork table, then. We'll just call this no, the I'm just, Saturday I, Arguing I know, with the Grip RON said he finds show. it best to ignore Chascara, but, you know, sometimes mm. ignoring people is fine, mm. and sometimes you just plain have to go, okay, excuse me. And then you get to the point where you just go, okay, honey. If it comforts you to think that way, I'm just, that's your thought, that's your belief, and I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to do my thing again, okay? Oh, so it's up to you, sweetie. Yeah. I'm, I'm not holding you hostage today. Today you, you were an oh, invited no, no. guest. I'm just, I'm just saying that, you know, there are times when, there are times when, yeah, ignoring someone because you yeah. really don't want to feed the beast yeah. kind of thing, yeah. that, that is appropriate. And then there are times when you just plain have to get up and go, okay, I can't ignore this shit. I got to say something. Well, that's up and to you. Then you also come to a point in in a conversation sometimes or a discussion or a debate or a tirade, however you wish to look at it. Uh, but you come into a verbal exchange where you just finally go, okay, okay, obviously you're not going to pay attention to one damn thing I'm saying. And that's fine. But, that is but your, your choice. That is but, your option. But your but, attention is on the one person that, that you can't reach. But has, yeah, I see Goober yeah, do, do so, this every day. And it's like is it, it a waste of time to do that? Or no, is it it's, a, it's a game. Life lesson that you actually finally had to get to the point where it's like, okay, here's my life lesson. I just realized. No, I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> it's an attention-seeking tactic. So, if you give it the attention, which you are, it's getting what it wants. Therefore, yes. you should get and off, we, you should replace me with him so you can do a show. Oh, good God, no. Oh, and don't be getting all butt hurt. I'm not, whoa, 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 butt hurt. I'm just being real, and it's like, wow. I so know, but it's... If it's, I was okay. in the chat room I'm doing that to Moose and... It, oh, okay, sweetie. But if I was in the chat room doing that to Moose and uh, Grimner being a third party in the chat and them not talking to each other, talking about me. I think, wow, weird. Okay. But so aren't, I just, we, aren't we interacting with the chat? Uh, no, you no, the you do. I, me, I ignore the chat. Unless it's good shit that I want to see. I don't read it. And I have I have the superpower. <laughs> it's, it comes from, you know, when they gave me the circumcision, I got this superpower, and it gives me the ability to ignore shit that doesn't please me. And I can just blame it on my circumcision and my nuts. Well, see, and, and that was kind of sort of the point I was trying to make is that. I'm know, having fun with you on the radio. Well and good. Yeah. I and care. I can ignore, but every once in a while something catches my eye and I have to address it. Oh. And once I address it, and then if I keep at it and realize, duh, you got a mm. freaking knot in the middle of your forehead. <laughs> and you're Head on a brick wall. Yeah. Perhaps you ought to step away. So that's that was what I was doing. Was like this caught my eye. Yeah. I addressed it, and okay. Yeah, but done now. I've got my bullwinkle side too. You know. 
Yes, I know you do. And I see things very simply in life. Now, I'm not a complicated kind of guy. And, uh, and you know, I tell, I tell my wife certain little, little things about other folk, my personal opinion. And uh, she doesn't always agree with me. Can you imagine? I know. Shock, shock. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, the nerve of her to think for her fucking self. What the fuck kind of world are we in? Huh? I know. That's why I took to the kitchen. <laughs> what are you doing here now? Go to the kitchen and cook something. <laughs> yeah. Well, she ain't going to be barefoot and pregnant. She'd kick your ass ten ways from Sunday. No, she wouldn't. That's just a term of... Verbally, she sure as hell could. Nah. And she could do it in Danish, and you wouldn't even know what she was saying. Yeah, see, the things that we seriously <laughs> disagree on are things that can't be proven anyway, so it doesn't matter. It can't. It doesn't matter to me. It, matter, it might matter to her some, but I don't give a flying shit. Because all this crap that we live with, that we've lived with in the past, to the present, that's been proven to be bullshit, has not showed people, enough people, that if it's one thing is a lie, what part of it's true? There you go. You can't, you can't run something this badly uh, unless you're doing it on purpose. This, this is not a product of uh, mistake and whoops. This is a product of sabotage and purpose oh, yeah. fucking destruction. Oh, these fuckers know better. Oh, hemp is the best plant we have. We know this. But law, we got, see, back to what we started with, right? Where was Legal it? schmeagle. No, yeah. the what, the way that they we've said been. it was legal or illegal. Right, that, that's that they point I was making a about. law or an edict. The update of the verbal definition, see? Mm-hmm. It's all dependent on that. Well, then, well, then there is no truth. There is a, well, we wrote this on Tuesday and you owe us $80. Well, how do you fight that? They said so. What do you do? You were yeah. driving your car. You were doing 75. You stopped for the cop. And, well, there you go. Who made the mistake, the cop or you? <laughs> hmm. Open for interpretation. Did, did um, you know I saw yeah. links that showed people that would say to the police, and they videotaped and put the link on it. I wish you could remember what it's called. But they would say, I don't answer questions. And the cop would leave them and let, turn around and leave. And that's all they said on the link that you could see. And it's like, wait a minute. How did they get to that point? <laughs> you know? Or did the cop walk right up and that's the first fucking thing they said is I don't answer questions. And the cop just knows that that's that. That's all you need to know to fight the admiralty court. You got to know what they're saying. So you got to know exactly what to say to the cop that he knows to leave you alone because it does exist. It does exist, but in a perfect world, it does exist. I've seen, I saw the link on my, with my eyes. I saw people do it. It wasn't actors. It was, but it was a little insert. Now, what I'm saying is I don't know but if it was... But how many times do those interchanges go down where it doesn't go down that pleasantly? About a thousand of you are you are working with another individual and you're working with another individual with their beliefs as well. And if they are not of an understanding, it's not going to go that well. But do you see those videos on YouTube? Not well. Yeah, you do see some of them, but... Mm. You know, so that's that's where it's you're not in a perfect vacuum. You're not just All operating right. and, on your own. And who's being pushed to behave in a combative fashion? Everybody, both sides yes. of the coin, equally. Yes. Defend yourself. Attack them. Wait a minute. You know, wait. They were supposed to be protecting you, and something shifted. Attack them before they attack you. That's that's pretty much. You know, that's that whole dog eat dog world mindset is attack them before they attack you and that's that's also a bs but i do got to go back to when Mm -hmm. you said that if there is a grain of truth but Mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch of lie you need to discard it you need to discard the lie why find that grain. you need to find that grain of truth in in government really it went wrong okay and where in the fuck is there a grain of truth in government look at what the fucking word means no 
It's a deception. Well, yeah. We're lied it's, to. We're manipulated. We're held hostage against our fucking yes. will. And then when the you word speak, means mind control. And yes. When, okay, but when you speak out against this goddamn government shit to anybody, whoever they may be, they can always find five things to justify their fucking government, because that's the reality of living. Poor people don't complain. Poor people have nothing to complain about. They don't even know they're poor. How they know? I didn't know. I didn't know. I grew up poor until I got told I grew up poor. So what I'm saying is we're taught these ideas on the internet and TV and shit like that, that when you're living it, it doesn't even fucking play in. You don't even know it. When I was nine years old, I didn't know about anything. I still remember certain little bits of being nine years old, just being dumb as a fucking rock about grown up crap. And see, you just said it right there, grown up crap. Because I had a fucking childhood, unlike the people that have come up since I was born, that I'm 20 and 30 and 40 years older than. Those people grew up in a different world completely. And they didn't yeah. enjoy, oh man, I had, through all of the shitty fucking things that did happen in my life, I had way more fun than I did the disappointment. So, on a balance sheet, man, I'm way up there in the high 90s. On the good, you know, to the bad. As far as memory, because life, that's what I was saying about this time thing. Is, ah, I got memories, and I can avoid certain memories, or I can remember them on purpose. See, But I have that ability to just not look at something that happened 40 years ago. It doesn't matter anymore. It could only matter to me, and it could only matter if I make it possible. So I avoid the running myself through guilt and shit over old crap that happened in life. Things like that. Have you, you know, you're talking about memory. Have you ever, ever had a memory come back because of a smell or a sound that would trigger a memory? See, not, not to the point where I'm aware of that's what made it come back. <coughs> But I, hmm, excuse me. Excuse you. Yes, but on Thank the other hand, I know. Yeah, but well, I'm thinking about this real quick. See, I know what's happened, but I can't isolate like a specific thing. But I, I know I've fallen to it. But when it does happen, I don't think I recognize it as such at the time. I'd have to purposely try to remember an incident. You know, it's too. Too brief, too fleeting for me. I need bigger things. I'm a I'm a shallow guy. You know, you got to hit me in the head with a brick to get my attention, right? The little yeah. things. Ah, give give two flying shits. And the things that I call little are seemingly big to other people because the way that we look at life is so opposite. Their life revolves round. My life goes on and on and on. So it's flat. And then any time that, uh, good Lord, like Hans loves to fuck with me about, oh, I'm a anti this or an anti that. No, just show me a proven proof. Show me a picture of the earth from outer space. It's all I want to see. You know? And zoom in on Hansel's house and him flipping me off on his porch. And I'll be happy. That would do it. I just want to see the globe round on a piece of fucking film everybody else knows was taken from space. Why don't they do that? They got space stations out there and all this other crap they're telling us about. Yeah. If something's true, you don't got to push it on anyone. Something uh, you you deprive them of the truth. You don't push the truth. The truth is something you they hold it back from you. It's very misleading how life is gone and how what is proven to be in the long run. The truth has always been in front of me. It says the truth people, the people that speak the truth are always the ones that sound the weirdest in the society that you're in. So, good luck. Yeah. Well, and yet, um, I I talk to so many people that, man, oh, man, when they, everybody has their own truth as well. And it comes from their own experience and, you know, their own be life systems. 
Everybody <laughs> has their own truth. Yeah. Right. I I'm just I'm just to the point now where it's like there's an awful lot of things that I think, but mm. I I don't be live a lot and i pronounce it that way because there is a lie inside every belief and inside every belief system mm. there is a lie yeah. and i don't think that was by accident i don't think anything is by accident mm. but you know i mean yeah there's people that have car accidents and shit but is it is it really an accident or is it because someone was inattentive or because machinery broke down or what That's how you happened? define an accident, though. It's two, yeah. two things yeah. op- like friction. You know, two things trying to occupy the same spot at the same time are going to create a problem. That's the problem. And we're all so greedy and everybody's got to have so much to survive. And it, it, it's bullshit. No, what is the point of a billion anything? Just depriving other people to have some. That's why we'll never see like you know Trump City or Bill Gatesville, where he starts a, a new place for people to begin over again for the weak and the oh. underprivileged. You'll never see. You'll just see his fucking bank account swell over forty years, but you'll never see him do anything. Inoculate half of fucking Africa so you can wipe them out too, maybe under the guise of help. Because people, yeah. we only visually see what we visually see. And the the crap that you spend your time paying attention to, you believe it. That's the only fi- way I can figure this. Because, I mean, for fuck's sake, Donald Trump is in the White House. That is got to be like the, the worst joke of the, the 19, uh, 1990s. Oh, I got to tell you, this, this reality TV show... It really can be quite entertaining. It's pretty frustrating at times as well. But when you come at it with the with the concept of this is just reality TV, and then you go back to your own reality, and and yet I also understand that that I don't live in a vacuum. That things that someone does on the other side of the country can affect me eventually. So I don't I don't know. I I find Donald Trump entertaining so far. I I also find him infuriating at times and irritating mm-hmm. at times. Mm-hmm. But it's really no different than mm-hmm. than San Fran Nan. I find her extremely entertaining when she's trying to speak and mm-hmm. the mouth moves but nothing comes out because the brain is definitely botoxified. Mm-hmm. And then there's an awful lot of times where I go, "Holy crap. Holy crap." You know, and, and I saw something this morning about her mm-hmm. oh. talking about her being Speaker of the House. <laughs> oh. and, and it just it popped into my head. George Carlin was so freaking right. Um, having her as Speaker of the House really calls into question the condition of the House. Because you have all of these people that are bitching about Nancy Pelosi and how she's doing this and how she's doing that. But y'all made her Speaker of the House. What's well, fudge? Y'all, y'all were complicit in this shit. Okay. Or, you didn't or expect this kind of crap to happen. Or are they just positioned there and we're told they're voted in? How how do we know? I mean, where's your accountability for shit? It's too big to oh, ever. Yeah. There's so many fucking thousands of layers to this shit cake that we live in. It, you can't never get to yeah. the reality of any of it. We're, We're living, living on the garbage. Show. It, well, to a point. You know, and, and on second-rate shit. That's the part that rocks my ass. We would be living uh, in a more uh, friendly atmosphere if we were eating better and this 50 fucking 60 cycle generator shit was different. You know, Rob always corrects me. I'm talking to old old school talk, but this, it's the same point. You know, I don't care how you define. You, you can define a pile of shit in five different ways, and in the end of the fucking conversation, it's still a pile of shit. So you know how you got yeah, there. Yeah, it may have little kernels of corn in it. Yeah, but that's because you just didn't chew good enough. But <laughs> yeah. or they constitute. There's a question. Oh, good lord. And welcome now, to the Dork Table for the question of the week. Inquiring minds <laughs> uh, would like to know, yeah. does corn reconstitute? 
Or is it just that you didn't chew it good enough? Mm. That's what I would like to know. I bet you don't really want to know. <laughs> I bet you could care less. Actually, it would be a fun little trivia thing to throw out at a family reunion. Did you know? <laughs> so how do you how do you waste your time though? I hear that a lot. I've said that to people. Don't waste your time. You know, it, instead instead of I'm not going to do that. <laughs> don't waste your time. Not don't waste your time talking to me because I'll never listen to two words you ever speak. But don't waste your time. And yet, is it a waste of their time? You know, because they, they obviously needed to say that. They obviously needed to get that out, and they heard it out loud. And so for them, possibly it was not a waste of time. For you, if you actually sat there and paid attention, it could have been a waste of time. And yet, was it a waste of time? Because then you just, you know, you either reaffirmed the fact that, wow, I really don't want to listen to that person again or, you know, whatever, but hmm. well, you know, along yeah. along with the individual seems to come that uh, that competitive combatant side to a person, to a human mm-hmm. person. There I go talking in admiralty court on you. But, you know, if you just say man, women have been taught to disengage from that word because you're not man, you're women man. Oh, uh, we know. <laughs> no we're Ooh. Yeah, yeah, I was okay. You're you say it whatever dialect you please. Still come, you know. Yeah, but most of you guys, when you see yeah. boobs, you go woo. Yep, there you go. <laughs> boobs make boobs make the world a happy place. Let me tell you. There you go. And you know, you who, want to know something else that's a happy place? What? I Where? I I did something for me the other day. <laughs> you did. What did you do? Just because. Just because, because I've wanted to learn how to how to play a hand pan drum mm. forever. Mm-hmm. Well, not necessarily forever, well, but you it's been for a like while. Forever. Okay, got it. And so I ordered one the other day. I have a hand pan steel percussion drum in. I think it's in D minor. Uh-huh. Well, that and ought to be a. I'm kick. going to learn to play. The hand pan drum. So yeah. now my neighbors yeah. will really have something to bitch about if I'm sitting out in the yard in my little hippie clothes. Yeah. Well, <laughs> see, I'm playing the, my hand pan drum and they're going, and, what the and, hell's that noise? <laughs> no, 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 because I was going to suggest to you as a fellow, I, I don't have a kit to this day, but I, I have owned kits of court along the road. And as a closet drummer, I will tell you, You'll have your own style. It, there's more to it than just keeping time. There's you. Just like certain guitar yeah. players, they sound they all sound the same, and you'll hear Eric Clapton, and you go, wow. Or maybe to me, I hear a Keith, and I go, wow. And then I hear a dozen other guys, and they just don't have it. And then I hear a, you know, George Harris, and the same thing, wow. And they got a lot of girls that came up since I came up. When, when my day it was there wasn't any girls out there doing it. It was a male industry, you know, because we yeah. we came from the time where women were, had the most freedom of uh, of that period. I think my mom never had to work for a, a, a business in in her whole life. I mean, from the point of after meeting my father, I I never discussed yeah. if she was like a you know, worker slave or something, but uh, her life from, you know, when she got to America to the the end in Scotland, she never worked. So, there you go. And my father was not wealthy, but he made enough earnings, you know, through his, his job to support everybody fine. You know? Yeah. We had, yeah, I when I was a teenager, I had a car. When I was five years old, I had a go-kart, you know. The guy was generous as fuck. I had a nice bicycle to ride. He made me win it in a swim thing, but I still did it, and he still paid me. You know, he gave me he gave me a goal. He said, "I want you to get two ribbons, first place ribbons in swimming." So they had two uh, relays that weekend, and both teams hit first place. And he felt, well, that's participation. So there you go. I'll get you the bike. 
And he was that kind of a stand-up, you know, if he said he'll do it, he'll do it kind of guy. We come from that. And today, people don't. Because that didn't yeah. carry on into my generation. Oh, fuck no. We got fucked with by the Nixon administration really bad. And then, oh, we, we had all that dead time in the late 70s. And they had that idiot Ford, and they had that uh, peanut farmer Carter in there. And all that fill-in time was setting everybody up for Reagan. And 1980 was like the end of the world for me. Pretty much financially. Oh yeah. Looking back at it, I see I see the damage that this fucker did way before Obama and you know Clinton and any of these idiots, Bush, Trump, no, a bunch of monkeys. I tell you, you want to go back and find some disgusting fucking shit done in Washington, Nixon. <laughs> Telling you, wow. We there you go. And then you go. Well, then you go ten years where it was just kind of loopy, and we were just in a lot of wars here and there, nothing special. Then the eighties hit, and everything changed. American businesses started uh, being moved to other countries. <laughs> just yeah. American steel used to rule the freaking world, right? And then, and then the eighties came, and then uh, you get your steel from China. And it's supposedly not as good and this, that, and yet. See, I, the fuck difference does it make what country you make it in? It's the materials you use to make something. And and here we are, and we're kind of like, seem to be groomed into believing that. What you're given is what you get. Yeah. But I didn't come, well. I didn't come from that, so I've never been able to, you know, become willing to fall in. I sold shit for a living in my 20s. Uh, you know, late teens, early 20s. I, I know how this shit works. It's not what we've been taught. You know, you can say anything you want to in advertising as long as you just say it. Doesn't There's no truth to it. You're selling something. <laughs> uh, man. I'll tell you, there was a few times I would buy a product and relabel it to sell it differently for a whole other purpose. I mentioned it on the dork table before. So, you know, from experience to, to know these things. And then at my age. And then to be at a place where I can't use them is kind of frustrating. But if I ever go, if I ever end up back home in the States, I know what to do. Well, yeah. Because the game's the, states, the game's the going to go on. The states are the states, you yeah. know. Oh, whatever you. The game is going to continue. We're not going to see any collapse anytime soon. You watch. They'll prop this fucking thing up with something else. They don't want it to collapse. They, the, if it collapses, they collapse too. True. Okay. True. But the fear of the collapse now there is a control mechanism. Mm. 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 But once again, it's the use of fear to control. What are you afraid of? What am I afraid of? Hmm? That my fly swatter will break before I kill all the flies. <laughs> <laughs> the wicked witch of the of the West. <laughs> I saw I saw a meme on uh, mines today of a witch at a pet store and the black cat is coming to the window. <laughs> One, and the, the and the witch has a big smile on her face because she's a black cat. Ah. So Halloween isn't only a time to scare the shit out of each other. Sometimes there's, there, it's got its nice side. Yeah. Just a, yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of what attracts you to it. What was it? Saw went, how do you, uh, I don't mm-hmm. remember how you're supposed to pronounce that. What? Uh, pronounce. What Halloween initially started out as. I don't have any idea. I thought you might know that. Because it seems like it'd be up your alley, at you old witch. <laughs> I know. Calling you horrible I names. Know. Live on the dork table, I'm calling you horrible names. I you should know. be thanking well, me you know, for playing. I'm a Jewy bastard. You call me an old witch. It's okay. You know, witch didn't used to be a bad word. Neither did crone or hag. Oh, they used to be. I want to quote you correctly on something you said. You said, uh, the speed of light is not 
a constant or yeah, is it's, not it's not constant. it's not constant okay not a con but not constant got it i did get it right because when i get stoned you know what happens i forget what people said an hour ago <laughs> and you know what happens when i don't get stoned what i forget what people said an hour ago but i can remember my fucking phone number from being a child in 1968. <laughs> I still I remember see. the first time I heard Led Zeppelin. And I was like, wow. Fucking the older kids are cool. <laughs> this is wild shit. What the fuck is this? <laughs> I didn't hear Led Zeppelin until I was out of high school. What year was that, though? See, I'm... After 77. 77. We weren't allowed to play that stuff in our house. My dad was. Oh, wow. Them. That was some. Okay. Wow. That is a big difference from. I think I was 1968 or 9. One or the now, other. I'd, I'm, I'd heard Pink Floyd while I was in high school, and you'll never believe where I first heard Pink Floyd. I'm pretty sure it was 68. Where? My junior English teacher. <laughs> She used to play Pink Floyd when we had study time. She would play Pink Floyd for us. That's the first time I'd heard Pink Floyd. So, yeah, I had kind of a, a very different upbringing. But, you know, conservative, good German Russian Catholic, hmm. Catholic slash Protestant uh, community <coughs> in the middle of Kansas. So, you know. Well, you know, who is who is really a, the fraud? Is it the system... Or is it the individual? Both. Okay. Wow. This ought to be the system is flawed, but the individual is flawed for believing in it. Oh, wow. Well, but how do you ever come to that decision on? It's not something anybody can guide you to. You no, cannot you have be to come instructed. To it yeah. And, and that's yeah. just my perspective. Yeah. Right. Mine too. I agree with it. I don't see anybody ever pushing me. And then getting a result like they got out of showing me the driver's license was a bunch of shit. And then I had to go through a few years before I would actually um, try to prove it. And when I did, I went, wow, they weren't kidding. Because you have to willingly participate in this thing, this joint illusion, or it just leaves you alone. If you don't get anything from it, it doesn't know you're there. It only recognizes the uh, the tentacles. Like being a citizen would, would be the verbal explanation of what a tentacle would represent. You're, you're not anything, really. You're a part of a bigger thing. And you think that the big thing's representing you, but it ain't. <laughs> and they'll even tell you. Oh, I hear music going on. Miss Mary is on a raid. Yeah, I'm getting text messages. Ooh, baby. She's being communicated with in the real world. <laughs> ah. My farmer wrote an almanac to Mr. Grimner. He just wrote it yep. <laughs> with a sense of fucking humor. That's all. May your well, corn... Well, I saw that, I saw that Duh asked if anybody had read the farmer's almanac. Because I was busy perusing and, and looking up Sahwin, yeah. which is the uh, pagan thing mm. well, for Halloween. If I believed something, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what. Some, I don't even think I need an example to prove this point. Doesn't matter what I believe. There's no way you or anybody else could convince me that I'm not correct, except me. Now. I assume that's how everybody else thinks, but I think I'm wrong. But I still assume that. But I don't yeah. think it work. It so rarely works out. Works out that way with you. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, and I've finally come to the conclusion, or a conclusion so far, hmm. um, that. People believe what they want to believe when they're ready to believe it. When they're no long, when something comes in that kind of sort of shakes that belief, mm. they will either get firmer in their belief or they will start questioning it and uh. move on to something different, whatever that something different <laughs> might be. Yeah. But there's an awful lot of people that have grown so very attached to their beliefs 
that, by God, it's like amputating a major dangly bit. Uh, beliefs. It's like, oh, minute. you can't do that. No. That's my belief. Don't you touch my belief. It may be a little belief, but it's mine. No, I don't even mean it that way. I mean it more in just the personal belief is usually backed in your own head with some kind of explanation. I think this because of explanation. I'm not yeah, just because of your experience that you've had so far. Okay. Well, we'll use politics, right? Politics is nothing more than an illusion to me. Why? It's it's real. I see it, but I'm I'm not buying. It's real because you have enough people believing in it. Well, the result You have to have enough people believing in it in order for it to actually get some kind of reality to it. But the results of all this crap don't have anything to do with me at all. I don't feel any uh, anything in my life change one way or the other with or without the influence of other countries at this point in life because I'm just used to being here. So things are, you know, they're going on forward. I mean, it doesn't matter what. And it's it, instead of the longer I'm here, the less noticeable not just the new kids that come up behind the other kids are making uh, making me know, letting me know still. Hey, I speak English. You can come to my my checkout anytime you want. And uh, that way they get to practice their English and get a little you know uh, pat on the back in public for being you know good at it. It's kind of a hundred you know it works for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I still get to, well, I thought these things would would shift over the time that I'm here, and they're, they're like staples, you know? so, the, hmm. Hmm. and I, uh, hmm. I would say it is my lack of trying to change anything here to suit me that seems to benefit me. I flow with Denmark, you know, whatever way they're going, I'm going to go with them. If they're going to oh, go invade go. Afghanistan, by God, I'm stuck in there with them because I married Sir. Yeah, there you go. There you go. And it's no more real to me than it was when I was alone in Scotland or uh, in a relationship in, in America. Life is still, it's like kind of an illusion because my personal life is so peaceful and quiet. But the internet, or even down the street, oh, I could have turned left and went the wrong way, but it didn't. See, whatever, whatever my life purpose is, whatever the fuck that's all about, whatever path I'm going down. See, I don't see it how other people see it. I'm just on a road, and the road's going to either end or it ain't, and I just keep walking down it. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm on a spinning anything, doing a thousand miles an hour. No. I think I'm on a flat thing walking somewhere. So you can be interpreted that however you like. It yeah. doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, until you walk uphill and then you realize it's got bumps to it. So. Oh, right. I don't know, but, but to voice an opinion like that, it gets certain people really upset because they don't like to be disagreed with because they know the truth. And I say, I don't... For one, here's the top thing I've come up with in the last couple of months, maybe. I don't really care what the truth is in the first fucking place. What do you think of that? Huh? 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 No. Um, you don't want to be combative with you me? You don't really care, and yet you no. do? No, yeah, but I don't. It's words. It's typing. But care? Physically? Nah. I sit here, right? Right next to this freaking cat. He's on a chair right next to me. It's unbelievable. And no matter what tone of voice I carry or if I slap shit, or what, he still stays there. But certain mm -hmm. sounds will get his attention, but he won't go anywhere sometimes. He'll just stay right where he is. Wow. To have that, hmm, whatever the hell that me and the cat have in common is way more important than uh, sounds and noise and shit like that. Isn't that weird? It's a weird topic. I don't know how to ex explain it's like a uh, like a friendship with an animal, but this well, it's a bond. But a cat, yeah. cats are freaking nasty. They're horrible, crazy animals. They do kinds of weird. Sh they claw and they scratch and they bite. They're vicious. 
So to have dogs one. Dogs lick their backside and then they come up and they give yeah, you kisses. Right. Mm-hmm. But yeah. to have one so docile that could be so wild is bizarre. I didn't know I had that in me until the last year with the cat. Since Sir, um, Sir had him, he got ill. And then while she was getting at the vet, getting cured, they whacked his nuts off. And they turned him ah. in. Yeah, they turned him into a kitten. And I'm telling you, the last, <laughs> what's it, I guess about six months or so. I've been, you, you were off the radio. But I think I've spoken about it alone. But what I'm getting to, I think, is to be as uh, boisterous of a person as I've been accused of being. Why is this old cat? so calm sitting next to me while I speak loudly and weird and voices and all this other crap. The cat just lays there. Yeah. Slap my leg, nothing. And you would expect a, a feral, well, he lives outside, inside, outside. So mm-hmm. he's kind of a feral cat, right? Yeah. Like feral light, you know, because he's living in the... In, the outsides in Denmark, he would disappear for weeks at a time when, since we moved in the house. Because this is the cat that was here when we moved in. <laughs> uh huh. Wow, I'm blown away, Mary. It's just like, he was the house cat. <laughs> yeah. And, the house cat, not and, a house cat. And when the woman moved, and I, she had him here his whole life. So when she moved, he came back to the house, left her where she was. And it was just such a weird thing to have. I never had that happen. But here I am in this fairy tale, Denmark. You know, so it's a very exotic story, I suppose, if I was listening to it instead of living it. You know? Living it, it's like moving to another state where people are semi-sane. Because uh, I lived in other, you know, lived in America, places that were just as comfortable as this. Just small. You know? Not the bigger places, crazy, chaos, wacko. The small places, Denmark. <laughs> Scotland. Scotland was pretty quiet, too. Yeah. Well, I could yeah. always go yes, to... The whole time you were talking about that, I, Buckaroo Bonsai popped into my head. No matter where you go, <laughs> there you are. Yeah. So, what do you do? I don't know. You've traveled a bit. Yeah, I've traveled a bit. I've lived a few places. and I I've just really learned to just enjoy where I'm at now, you know, not necessarily this physical place, but where I am right now, just enjoy where you're at right now until you're no longer at this place and then enjoy where you're at right now. And it's kind of a metaphysical kind of thing. But hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Kind of like all that uh, medical stuff that you're going through with your mom or am I yeah, bringing up oh, a God, bad subject? That's- no, that that's a whole can of worms that's just kind of crazy lately because mom, mom got put in the hospital last Sunday. Mm. Um, she woke up with chest pains and was quite concerned, understandable, and brother and his wife went over to the house and said, okay, mom, we're just going to take you to the hospital. Well, part of her problem is she's dehydrated. That's part of it. The other part of it is her memory is slipping. Uh, and I'm because I am really paying attention to this progression. This really started kicking it into gear when they put her on the blood pressure meds. You know, the memory issues, the dehydration issues, the, some of these other things. And <clears throat> so I keep telling my siblings, we need to get her off these blood pressure meds. She does not need to be on them. The only reason they put her on her because she had massive stressors going on at the time. And instead of helping her deal with those stressors, they pilled her up. So, in any case, mom gets put in the hospital on Sunday for chest pains. Mm-hmm. Come to find out that what she had done was when my another sister had gone to the house to visit with her grandson, um, They were out digging flowers and getting flower seeds. Well, mom had stressed some muscles. Uh, She had pulled some muscles. But instead of realizing, you know, or acknowledging this is what she did, they said, no, we're going to keep her overnight for observation, and then we're going to run a stress test in the morning, and then we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that. 
So Monday morning they run a stress test on her, and everything is fine. Her heart's working just fine, especially considering the shit they've got her on. But so I go down to see her on Tuesday, and she's freaking exhausted because hospital beds are not comfortable. They keep hospitals, you know, temperature-wise pretty cool. So she was cold the whole time, so she didn't sleep well. And um, so I'm there trying to kind of help her loosen up her muscles. I wound up giving her a back rub. I took some oils down. I blended up some oils for her that help with inflammation in the muscles and um because she's got some sciatic, she's got her sciatic nerve pinched and and the muscles in her chest. So gave her a back rub, uh, worked on her hip a little bit. We walked around a bit. She got pretty tired easy, so she went to bed. Well, she's had all of this company all week long, and they had all all these tests scheduled, which as far as I'm concerned, it's the doctor's office milking Medicare because she's got damn good Medicare insurance. She's got the the extended services with Medicare. And she called me yesterday and she was like, I'm just so mad. I'm just so mad. And she went on for about an hour, which is not usual with my mom, just complaining about all these damn tests. And I said, Mom, you know, you can stop that real quick. Just tell them no. No, I'm not going to do any more of these tests. I am fine, and no, I'm not going to take your pills anymore. No. Well, but, well, but, and it's like, Mom, until you put down your foot like you did with us kids when we were younger and tell them, no, I'm not going to take this shit, You're not. it's not going to stop. So, wow, I, I didn't know it was so, weekend. yeah, I didn't know it was yeah. so dire, but I, I knew it was big. I didn't mean to bring it up at the rate. I didn't know about that. Well, about that. yeah, it's it's but. been. She's had a rough week. Mm-hmm. And, and Sorry I've to got hear that. Siblings coming to visit her and all that other fun stuff. And several of my siblings say, "Mom, you need to, we need to get you off these blood pressure meds." Which I want to go with her next to her next appointment, but she won't tell me when it is because the last time I went with her. Mm. <laughs> she was afraid I was going to get into a fight with the doctor, which I did. I behaved myself. You're a very bad but, girl. And the doctor did take her off her blood pressure meds. Mm. Just say it. At least for three months, she was off of them, and her memory started coming back. She was doing better, but mm. I got her some oils, and she did tell me that those oils are helping a bunch. Her sciatic isn't ah. bothering her as much. Her, her chest muscles that she pulled aren't bothering her so much. Mm. Um, I also got her some walnuts because walnuts are very good for memory. Mm -hmm. So it's just, it's such a long process. And bless her heart, she's 88 years old and she's been convinced by the doctors that you're old and this shit's going to happen. No, no. Being old don't mean squat. You know, she's an active person. She's been able to do this stuff until the last couple of weeks. What the hell? What has changed? Something in her diet. New drugs you put her Ah, on. That's what's changed. Okay. Uh Uh-oh. So. Yeah, you know how I feel about Big Pharma. Big Pharma can suck my pharma. Whatever the hell that means. Yeah. It's not Uh, good. I'll tell you that. Uh, 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 Get it? Uh, Get it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I I said it. it without saying it. So I was kind of pleased with myself because Big Pharma very really good. sucks ass. And welcome me. aboard, Maria13. Oh, I no. see Maria13 has joined. Uh-oh. Is that good? Is she from the gangs, the 13s? Living. Oh, no. I have no idea, but... Uh, I'll go ask yep. Chico. Chico will go. Ooh, where she is from. Ah. Anyway. Ooh. And Beatles talking about sex bot judges. What the hell? What the the? the I'm just gonna hope. And Maria just left. I'm not. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm still not riding that horse, no matter what they ever do. No, thank you, sex bot. I, I cannot imagine. Uh, at because my living, you know, I've been alive for all these years, and I've been around other life forms, so I cannot imagine replacing a human. You know, female with a 
Machine. Machine. It's insane. I know. That's, yeah. Here, put your pecker in the blender and hit puree. It's a, what the, are you nuts? I'll pass. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I I don't get that whole sex bot thing. You know, the like, first wow, thing I thought of is what? being a hacker and hacking into the remote controls of the sex bot so you can make it do shit. And I thought, well, if I could even think of it, man, there's already people that thought of it, figured out how to do it. Yeah. Put, build them with cameras to watch you and shit. Put it on fucking internet sites. I don't, I pass on oh, just that, the idea of it. It's disgusting. So I went, wow. Machinery. It's not not the human thing. It's the machinery part of this. Wait a minute. Yeah, I I just have this thing with, wow, you know, you really should hmm. But See, and that's, I, that's where I think there's something really, this this whole whatever has been going on is really working well because people are getting to the point where they really don't value life at all and they're willing to have sex with a machine that it's like wow whatever the plan was it's worked oh yeah this was your intent oh it you can't you see that this is the intent. If it was meant to work well, it would. We're, we're, qual- we're qualified. We're capable. We're just not using the right tools or the right uh, recipes and ingredients to make it work. We're still using yeah. oil. So, and now they're going to go to nuclear instead of going to hemp. These freaking idiots. It's hopeless. You can't. It only took 80 years. and They've wiped hemp off the fucking place, planet. It's insane. But why? Why do we even need? Why do we need to even burn anything like that? Why not focus on what Tesla was doing? And I think I, you know, the more I'm reading, the more I'm researching on Tesla. I think he didn't necessarily discover anything. He was reintroducing old tech. So, you know, wh- why are we? I mean, yes, I see growing hemp as a very beneficial thing. I don't have a problem with growing hemp. I'd like to be able to grow hemp myself. But, you know, why not Why not really invest and investigate in what Tesla was doing? But no, now everybody equates the name Tesla with these damn cars that blow up instead of Tesla, who was a very brilliant person who was bringing back, reintroducing old technology that we were not allowed to know about because, well, can't make a profit off of that stuff So, because everybody can just access it. So that's, okay, off on a tangent there. <laughs> oh, feel free. That's what, you're, that's what you do here. Yeah, that, well, yeah, I do tend yeah. to go on tangents. So I do too. And that's what the program was about. You don't yeah. have to be agreeing with people to just tell them what you think. And just because you tell me what you think doesn't, I don't always agree with every freaking idea and detail, but the overall thing, though, yeah. Like the Greta, you know, I don't hate yeah. anybody. I don't hate no one. I just go, wow, this poor kid is being abused by our freaking parents. And you either you respond to that in the positive and encourage it, or you respond to that in the negative and you insult the kid and you make it die because it's bad for you. I cannot remember in a lifetime the last time a 16-year-old girl spoke anything to me that didn't end in disaster. So, <laughs> go away, oh, I'm busy, oh, I'm 60, oh, now. I'm not listening to 16-year-old girls whine about fucking anything. Leave me alone, I'm not a pedophile. I'm not attracted to that in the first fucking place. So, Well, you know, when they start put, when anyone starts putting demands on me, and it's going to happen or else. If that was a 60-year-old man saying what she's saying, who would listen to it? No one. See? That's why they pulled out the 16-year-old girl. You say the same words in a suit and tie with a fucking white set of skin and a short haircut, shaved, and people are going to go, fuck you, mister. 
It's the, Why do it's, I have to shave? It's not the message. It's the presenter <laughs> this time. Wow. Yes. This is a... It, well, if you're not intelligent enough to see you're being played for a fucking idiot, then you deserve the, resp- the results that you get. But the results you get, I get. So wait a minute here. <laughs> well, see, you can see that from from where you are. But I, I've been out to see my grandkids not too long ago. And that's the target audience of Greta, is my grandkids. Right, I exactly. Had to have a little yeah. chit chat with yeah. them. I mean, it was there was no aggression, there was no other, any of this other stuff. It was just you guys do realize. And by the time I was done explaining some things to them, they went, "Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much that's the science behind this, and that this is some of the facts behind that child. You need to stop and realize she needs some help." Well, all right, and all this weakness about the quality of the spoke the speaker, okay, and never a regard for the quality of the information. We're being yeah. herded like a bunch of fucking idiots, like usual. Same old goddamn Kennedy crap all over again with a different color on it. Nothing changes. Well, they did the same thing with Obama. Nine Eleven, Obama eloquent speaker. So long as he had a speech or a teleprompter, he was an eloquent speaker, and he reeled in an awful lot of people. Well, it doesn't matter. What matters is where the big business goes. That's what matters. And that's yeah. The people and it was don't the big pe- business using these little prop ups, these little puppets. We as people never have and never will matter to anything that's gotten this out of control it needs to end period and nobody's going to ever be for that what do you replace it with (laughs) there you go well uh uh well here we go with that catchphrase answer doesn't really take me anywhere mary i'm saying no but it does the fear of the end is more it brings more than what do we do about it? it doesn't get as much attention People are more attentive to the end, the idea of an end, but they don't go anywhere after that. Zombies! Oh, the zombie apocalypse will come, and we will have to eat their brains. And, oh, are you but out of your is, fucking mind? That's the programming at work. I don't see that. No way. These people I live amongst are not going to do it like that. No, because mm-hmm. they didn't receive the same programming. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it goes as far as that. I think they do. I think they just uh, get it in such a, a subtler way, and it's so much easier to live with that it's it's more acceptable. So they don't see that. Yeah, you know, it's rope. It's not it's not barbed wire where you go, hey, get me out of this. It's such loose rope that you don't feel confined. I don't see it in the, the people that I meet, that I speak to, and know. Over the time that I've been here, they, they're fine with their paying their taxes. They just, I think they use it as a status because they're comfortable. They don't need any more than they've got. I mean, what more do you really need? House, something well, to drive around in. if your cage is comfortable, why try and get out of it? Exactly. Well, that too, but hmm, we all live somewhere. Not everybody's a globetrotter like me. Well, these people have lived their, their whole life. They travel to Europe. Okay, maybe they go to America for every once in a great while, but that's it's like living in America. If you're of any, just traveling around the states is a big place. It's, you'll yes, see more in fifty states than than you will in the long run in going to Europe because there's so much of a a European input into America. You can run into every country from Europe in the states somewhere. I did. Oh, crime yes. Yeah, I, I know that it. just just from you know going to going to the big city Denver and now, to go see the the heart concert and running into people from local yokel a little two thousand mm-hmm. people burg. And now they're <laughs> they're trying to kill off the identity so that you know people won't be remembered. It's very weird. You know, like we have a lot of historical names that meant something in our lifetime to us represented different things, arts, science, music, whatever the fuck it was, a painter that you liked, a sculptor, something. And in the future, the creators are going to be what? They're not going to have a sex. They're not going to have a a gender. They're not going to have an identity. 
they're going to be what? Cogs in a bigger machine? <laughs> That's what they want people to think. I don't see that for the future, but What do you s- Well, we got to go anyway. It's almost over. Yeah. <clears throat> Say good night, Alice. Uh, anyway. Uh, it's you, not good. It's not Alice. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Am I in Wonderland? And I'm in Oz. We're straight. We're at reallibertymedia.com for a schedule. Type that in your browser. And what we're going to do different is if Mary's got something incredibly deep to think about and say, I think she should close the show with it. Thanks, everybody, for playing on the dork table. Uh, something incredibly deep? If that's what you feel. I, mm, what came to mind? Okay, I'll just, I'll just tell you. Everybody thinks that black holes and supernova and all this other fun stuff are the most powerful thing in the universe. But what you got to realize is the thought is the most powerful thing in the universe. Because if you can think of it, you can make it so. Now, the big kicker to that are your thoughts your own. There's a kicker. So, that's my deep thought for the day. What? And thanks... <laughs> Thanks for coming and helping me on the dark table. Oh, thank you for inviting me. Yeah, it's no, I don't know, just just no fun to be on the dark table alone. I like to have another dork to argue with about the price of the color blue. We can't, you know, because we can see different shit and still at the end of the show go, hey, it was fun talking with you, Mary. Because I don't, differences or not, eh, who cares? Next time I want to talk about the price of beans in China, though. Well, I'll be happy to do a show with you on Tuesday if you want to stop by. <laughs> hmm? Hmm? We'll, ha- we'll have to see which day I'm supposed to go down and see Mom. I don't think it would matter what day it is. I think Grim would appreciate a show out of us. So you tell me what day you've got, and we'll, we'll make it fit for you from Tuesday okay. to Friday. How's that? Work, uh, work yeah, for you? We'll- We'll, uh, we'll see how my week goes. And I'll just try to get Vinny to help me out with the uh, in a perfect world this week. So he helped me out last week. We did his birthday. <laughs> yeah, I know he had a birthday anniversary. <laughs> he came out as fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. Have an awesome weekend. Bye.